Well, hello, it's Daniel Dada from St. Jude's Clinic. And what I'd like to do now is uh, teach you a little bit about how to measure the uh, kyphosis angle, which is the um, large curvature that you see here on your left hand side. And we measure because it's the most accurate way of determining progress. Uh, so the gold standard, or basically the, I guess, the ultimate truth that we have at our moment, at the moment, um, is by using x-rays. So um, this is a, um, a different x-ray of a man, not of a lady on this occasion. This lady's 82, and she achieved um, a remarkable transformation in seven weeks, going from this position to this position. But we actually want to get some numbers on something like that as well. Um, this is a, uh, an x-ray here of the thoracic spine. So again, looking from the side, and you can see the um, orientation of the curve uh, from the before photo to the after photo here. So we're going to measure uh, what the difference is in uh, the angles. So um, x-rays themselves can be done by two ways, plain film and the other one is the digital, the EOS. Now the plain film and the EOS will both have problems associated with them because of the overlying shoulders. So here are the shoulders here and in here. So that's that long bone there and that long bone in there. But if you actually take the x-ray when you're in the marching position so that the left hand is behind the body, the right hand is in front of the body, you can remove the shoulders and you can actually start to see uh, the vertebra that are occurring um, in the higher levels and not with the superimposed shoulder. So um, what we're going to do is just take a look at how you obtain the angles. So there are two ways. Now the way in which, uh, and you can use both of them and it come to the same angle, but the way which I like to see is what's taking place here with the vertebra. So typically the uh, vertebra itself will um, apex at around about seven and eight, T7 and T8. So you can get your bearings from that as well. So there's T7 there, there's T8 there, there's nine there, 10 there, 11 there, and 12 there. Now the thoracic spine is made from the segments T1 to T12. And what you do is you measure from the top of the top to the bottom of the bottom. So you go to the top of T1 to the bottom of T12. But invariably what you'll see is that you don't get T1 in the X-ray. So you'll actually have to come down to T3 and take a look at the angle of T3. Now, I'm going to enlarge this even more, but you'll see that these lines are very faint. But there's the end plate of T5. There's the end plate of T4, and here is the end plate of T3, just there. Very hard to see, so you really do need to get your specs on and really take a look at that. And then what you do is you go down, so there's the end plates of each vertebra. So you go from the top of the top, that's T3, right down to the bottom of the bottom. Now here's the bottom of the bottom, here's 12 in here, and um, again, it's hard to see, so you come to these angles, there's 10, there's 11, there's 12, but you're actually going to the bottom of 12. I've actually put that in blue, and there's the bottom of L1. Now that's at a slightly lesser angle than this one in here. So top of the top, T1, or T3 if, it's can, be, um, if it can be seen, or T3 if it can't, and T12 down in here. Now, draw or construct a horizontal um, a line, uh, here now that can be done on some programs. I use Preview, and you um, go to the uh, mark the image and select the line, and then just hold the Shift key um, to be able to get your horizontal. Um, then you measure using a protractor what that angle is there. So that's a 57 degree angle. The top one in here is 53. Well, what's 53 and 57 but 110 degrees? Now we could use the same. A measurement in here by just taking that blue line and intersecting it with that line that's coming from T3 over here. So if those lines, and let's just do that uh, now, we're going to use the markup image, we're going to take a look at it, and I'm going to superimpose the line there on the other line just there. And I'm going to extend this line as well, so I'll just copy that and I'll just bring that down. A little precision uh, there as well. Now that's good enough, but it's this large angle in here 
That's the 110 degree angle. All right. The why I like to do the um, the horizontal version, and we'll just get rid of those put those to the side, just for the moment. So there's your 110 degree angle there. But why I like to do this top measured is because I'm measuring the angle of inclination of the vertebra T3 with the horizontal. That's 53 degrees. If we go to the next photo, you can also see that um, when we go uh, through the vertebra, there's uh, 7 and 8. Uh, very hard to see. 6, 5, 4 and 3 again just in there. All right. But now what you can do, there's the superior end plate of... Um, T3, so I've moved it down slightly. Um, what you can see is that 53 has now become 46 degrees. And if you take a look at the bottom angle of inclination in here, that was at 57. That's now at 36, a remarkable transformation. Consequently, um, from the 22nd of June 2016 to the 12th of July 2019, this fellow's got an 81 degree curve now, as opposed to a 110 degree curve. And just um, another, I guess, measurement that you might like to know is if you can construct a vertical line, which I've done um, in this photo here, let's just say that it goes from the tip of the bottom uh, vertebra of L2, bottom of the vertebra there, and it goes up, that's your vertical line, and then we do the same thing um, in this area in here. We'll see that his dimension, this dimension in here, has also changed as well. So let's just see if we can do that. Let's go to T12, L1, L2. We're going to say that that's here. So I'm just going to take this line again. Instead of Shift, I'm going to push Command Shift, and that'll give me my vertical now. And we can just take that down there, and we'll be able to then measure this distance from the convexity or the apex of the curve to that one there. Now, uh, not as easy to do if you don't have a calibration, but I just thought I'd show you uh, what we're doing here. This won't be the same. It won't be apples with apples here because um, the scale of both films here is not, the, is not the same. So let's just take that angle there and we'll give you a demonstration firstly. So we'll bring that to the horizontal. We're gonna take a look at that line there and that line there. So again, it's not an apples with apples things because this um, this film here is a completely different size to this one um, in here. So, uh, but what you can do is if you've got a calibration, if you've got a ruler measurement on the X-ray, and they generally come with that, you'll be able to uh, measure the distance from the apex of the curve to that center of gravity just in there. I'll do that uh, now. And this is the distance that I'm talking about. We can even change that. We can use the... That's really what I'm doing. I'm measuring from the convexity to the center of gravity line. So, all right, uh, that's how you do that. But now, what does it all mean? So, we've got 110 degrees in here. Uh, we've got 81 degrees in here. What it means is actually done by taking a look at these values. Now, this comes from Yoko Monroe's Essentials of Skeletal Radiology. It's on page 185, um, but it was from Williams and Wilkins, the publishers, in 1987. And you'll see that the um, females and the males actually have different um, uh, measurements. So from the minimum value to the maximum value, minimum value to the maximum value. So this fellow is 29, um, his minimum value should be 13, his maximum value should be about 48 in that region in there. He's at 110 degrees. He's well above the maximum. So um, that's actually how you measure it. And again, um, uh, I've constructed here on the, uh, the X-ray um, how they've done it. They've gone from the top of T1. Well, again, sometimes you won't see T1, so you're going to have to go down to T3 down there and you'll see that the angle increases somewhat that that line there is not as tilted as that one there so you add an extra four degrees to um, the vertebra the t3 vertebra if you're measuring from t3 because you can't see t1 so add a four degrees to all of those minimum and maximum values there so uh, that's how you do it this came at 36 this one was actually measured at 40.
So apologize for the, the lack of uh, clarity on that. But um, that's how you do it. Or the alternate way is that you construct a perpendicular from the lines and you actually measure the angle above and below, not from side to side. All right, so it's the above and below angle that you measure as those lines intersect. Again, I prefer this method where you can see what's taking place because I know that if I'm doing something for this fellow, what I can see is where I'm getting the most gain. And clearly, I got the most gain from the bottom vertebra. He went from 57 down to 35, a 22 degree drop. And, that's, and I know where it came from. I know what activities um, were um, done to be able to create that improvement. But I also see a wonderful transformation of 53 down to 46. All right, so I've got some more work to do up in this level in here with the gentleman to be able to assist him further. So anyway, I just thought I'd share with you how to measure um, the kyphosis um, in the x-ray. And um, I hope that was helpful. If you would like and, um, to have any more um, assistance with that, by all means, just go to the um, details uh, section below the video and um, take a look at the Calendly link there as well. And you can even get some more support that way as well. Bye for now. This is Daniel Dada from St. Jude's Clinic.